Welcome to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hemmerker. In each episode, she'll talk with your favorite romantic suspense authors. They will take you behind the scenes of the writing process, giving excerpts from their writing, and share stories about their writing life. Hello, and welcome to The Romantic Side of Suspense. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker, and I'm so glad you joined me. This episode, you're going to hear about this month's new releases in Christian Romantic Suspense. I hope you will enjoy hearing from your favorite Romantic Suspense authors as they talk about the background of their latest books. Um, I'm with Lynn H. Blackburn to talk about her latest Romantic Suspense, Never Fall Again. So welcome back to my show, Lynn. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So let's start with your heroine and her name. Why did you give her or pick this particular name for your heroine? Okay, so true story. I love, I've always paying attention to people's names, like what, you know, like baby names and different things like that. And my sister has a coworker who named her daughter Landry Jane. And I was smitten with Landry Jane. I was like, this is adorable. I think there may have been a Dallas Cowboy situation there as well in that mm. particular case where they were big fans you know of Tom mm-hmm. Henry the, you know all those kinds of things but it was just one of those names that stuck in my brain as a that's a cool name I like that name and so it's actually kind of funny because I have several a couple of unusual names in the series and when I pitched it originally my publisher did come back and say we're not a hundred percent sure about these names and so I actually put it out to my readers and said how do you feel about more unusual names? And the overwhelming response that I got back was, we like them as long as we can tell what gender they are. We like them mm, because yeah. it helps us, when, especially readers who read a lot, it helps them remember who these yeah. people are. And it helps distinguish them. And so when I sent that back, they said that was fine. So I have a Landry. Yeah. She's the, the heroine of the first book. And then Bronwyn is the heroine of the third book. And those were the two names they were kind of like, they weren't sure about, but. They went with them. So, yeah, was, that's how I picked her name. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's great. Um, so let's switch to your heroine. Uh, I mean, you're, sorry, not your heroine, your hero. And why, what is holding him back from finding love? I, I was so mean to him <laughs> in his backstory. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't come out on the page. But this is the guy who he loves kids. He loves family. He, he wants to have a family. And he was in the Marines. He met a woman. And, and this comes out relatively early. It's not a true, story, true spoiler. But basically, he not only fell in love with a woman, he fell in love with her kids, too. And when she mm. left him, before they he, – he was, in his mind, they were his. They were a family. They, he was going to get married, and he was deployed, and she left. Mm. And so for him, he didn't just lose her. He lost the kids, too. And so that – it wrecked him. And it has made it where he doesn't, he's very gun shy. He's gun shy of all relationships, but particularly of single moms because he is terrified of losing the kids too. And so he is really, he puts her in, he puts Landry in a box real fast. That is a, they friend zone each other. They mutually friend zone each other. And then I, I spent the whole book trying to get them out of it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> The things we do to our characters, like, and then we have to write them out of it. <laughs> I was making myself tear up when this, and so, and, and most of the backstory, there's it's there, but in my head, there's so much more detail mm-hmm. about his backstory. <laughs> you are a horrible person. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we write happy but, endings, so so to take exactly heart, listener. The take Lord. Heart. Yes, that's right. It'll be okay. He will be happy. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, but your villain may not be. So what? But um, so let's talk about a redeeming quality that your villain in this book has. Well, <laughs> I'm thinking about how to answer this without giving away. So I'm going to use some very vague pronouns just to sure. be careful. Because I never, I have fun making both male and female villains, and so I try to always be vague about it when I'm talking about them. But mm-hmm. this particular villain is extremely good at what they do, their their job, their real world, real life in their, you know, obviously in my fictional world, but obviously not in it. And they're also mm-hmm. very good at their villainy, but that's not the point. And it's it's funny to me because I actually 
have a couple people that could have been the villain. And I was well into it before I landed on which one really would be the villain. Um, and I had, had given several people some, some room where they could have been the villain. And, um, but it's, I like writing characters that um, you're not sure. They have, they, this particular villain is kind, uh, obviously a little mentally unstable, truly, you know, the way I've written him. He is not, um, he, he is definitely having a bit of a psychotic break mm. um, from reality. But he is, he is personable and kind. Oh, I said he. See, there you go. It's okay. It's a he. Um, he's <laughs> kind and personable and um, extremely good at what he does, which makes it more shocking when uh, when they realize what he's been up to behind the scenes. So mm. I, I yeah. think it's, you know, sometimes we want to make the, and sometimes it's true. You know, sometimes the bad guys are, you know, they're bums and they're not, you know, they're just evil without any, any, any redeeming qualities. And I, I think it's more fun to, and more frightening, truthfully, to write a, a, a bad guy that people don't see that coming. Mm-hmm. And they weren't, they didn't know that they had this, this side of them because they had the, and, and you know, we see it, you know, on the news, you're like, yep. Oh, he was such a good guy. We never saw that happening. And, and so I think, I think sometimes I, I do, enjoy is probably not the right word, but I like to explore some bad guys that have, um, that have enough going for them that nobody saw this, this evil side of them until it it all comes out in the open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of, of open, let's segue to setting. So why this setting for this particular story? Why did you pick that? Two reasons. Uh, one is I have concluded that my favorite thing is to use a fictional setting. I, I've written fictional and real world settings, and I definitely prefer fictional because I'm a control freak and I like being able to do whatever I want yes. with my dad <laughs> and not have to match up, uh, up something else. But mainly because I'm originally from the mountains of North Carolina, and I wanted I, did, I had this idea for this family, and I wanted to have them – I, I couldn't even I couldn't separate the family dynamics from the location I think because mm. in my head they're so closely connected, and I thought if I made it fictional, I could go back to my mountains. I live about an hour away now and have for a long time, but they're still my mountains, <laughs> yeah, still home to me, and so um I really wanted to have that that aspect because I think the small town feel of it is such it is so the setting is very important to the story and I, I haven't always written I don't always write books where you know, sometimes you write you read a book and you're like it could not happen anywhere else mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you read a book and you're like this could happen just about anywhere and that's okay nothing I'm not criticizing that but sometimes the setting does become almost its own character and it's crucial to the story and I wanted that to be the case and I don't think I could tell this story anywhere else and it wouldn't. It just wouldn't have the same, uh, the same feel, and and hopefully the same impact. And so, I really wanted that that feel of of a little bit of isolation in the mountains, um, with the beauty of it too, mm-hmm. and the waterfalls and all of that kind of stuff. So I've had a I've had a blast with that part of it. Oh, that's great. And um, so you mentioned a little bit about this story. Um, what was the genesis of it? What started you to write this particular storyline? Well, I am, I, I, I love the idea of found family. I think um, I, like many, many romantic suspense readers, you know, Dee Henderson was, you know, the, the O'Malley's, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. the OG romantic suspense. And I still love them. And I keep meaning to reread them, but I'm so busy. And I, but I love them so much. And I have that whole idea of, they chose to be a family, and that's really what I've had in my last several books where my characters have been connected more by their workplace, and they've kind of become close like a family, but I yeah. also love a family story, uh, you know, like Danny Petrie's um, Alaskan Courage with the um, McKinnons, and, you know, you can't get all the different mm-hmm. family members, and so I wanted to write a family, and then having setting, setting it in 
the mountains of North Carolina went with that. So when I talked to my editor about it, she was all on board. And then we talked about siblings and, and how to, you know, what to connect. And I am the oldest. My dad is the oldest of seven. I'm the oldest of 14 grandchildren. And I have a granny in Hendersonville, North Carolina, who turns 90 this year. And so I have a huge mountain family and I love them. And so there's a lot of, of connection there. And then, um, but I have, when the year I turned 16, I had four cousins born that year. So I have four cousins who are all 16 years younger than I am who are all the same age. And I thought, huh, maybe we should have cousins instead mm. of it being, you know, brothers or – because you don't see a lot of cousins. And so I kind of mixed it up. So I have two uh, – two are a brother and a sister and then their cousin, and they were all in the same grade because of where the birthdays fall. The brother and sister are only 10 months apart. And so um, – I wanted to have that connection, and I still, I still love that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the sec. I'm, I have a, the the second book is due to my editor in a week, and so I'm still spending a lot of time in Gossamer Falls, and um, and I love being there. So it makes it a, you know, when you're going to write a series of books, you want to have a concept and a place that you enjoy being for because you can yeah. be there a long time. And, <laughs> definitely. Um, and this is definitely, this is definitely one of those. All right, well, we are almost out of time, Lynn, and I would love to close with the tagline for Never Fall Again. Well, it's funny because when I, I was like, I'm not just 100% sure what that is. And then I realized that we really said it more for the whole series. And okay. we said that Gossamer Falls is a beautiful place to visit and a dangerous place to live. Ah, I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing about <laughs> Never Fall Again. Thank you for having me. Next on my show is Rebecca Hemlock, and we're going to talk about her latest romantic suspense, A Nurse's Revenge. So welcome to my show. Thank you for having me. We're going to dive right in and get to talk about your heroine, and how does she feel about love at the start of this story? Well, um, Michelle Blackburn um, is a character who, like, she dreams about love, you know, her entire life. You know, she's a a foster child who, you know, she wants that forever family. But when she meets uh, the hero in high school, then, you know, she thinks she's found the one, you know, they, she's going to have her happily ever after. But then things go south due to a, you know, a miscommunication. So she's kind of like, I, you know, the, the whole thing of true love, I, I'm, I'm over it. You know, she's just, you know, I'm I'm over it, and it's not a real thing. It doesn't really exist, you know. Mm. Okay. Well, um, and what about your hero? What's holding him back from finding love? Well, when when the miscommunication takes place, he actually works with her twin sister, so he sees her twin sister all the time. Um, the heroine actually leaves town. Um, so he he's forced to kind of relive that, you know, he, he he can't seem to get over her because here is her twin sister and he's constantly reminded of her. So he's kind of like, he wants to find love, he wants to move on, but can't because there's that constant reminder. Ah, well, let's, let's cue the entry of the villain. Um, who or what does your villain love the most in this story? The villain in this story... Um, He's a little bit complex because his identity is, you know, of course, questioned a bunch. But mm -hmm. he he thrives on control. He thrives on power. And he thinks that he's above the law. He thinks he can get away with anything. So he just, he loves having that, you know, 100% control over people. Mm. Yeah. And that's going to work out really well for him, I think. No, <laughs> Of course not. Um, let's talk about the setting. Why this particular setting? Well, that, that's a little bit of a, you know, deeper into me as, as a writer. Um, mm. when, when I first got started writing fiction, um, I thought it had to be this glamorous place, this big, you know, oh, you have to write about Europe, you have to write about this. 
and then I uh, actually got to meet with some of the, you know, the mainstream Christian authors um, and some of my favorites, of course. And they literally told me, write what you know. And I'm like, wait a minute, that can't be it. You know, it, <laughs> how would that be it? No. And then I go back and I look, and all of their books are set near their home place, you know. I'm like, what? So <laughs> then I started, yeah, it, it played out that way. So so this this particular town is very similar to my own hometown. Yes, no, I... I um. I either write what I know or I write where I want to go. <laughs> if I can go there for research. Um, let's talk about the positive underlying message of a nurse's revenge. Well, um, it, it's kind of in the title um, because, uh, you know, Christian, you know, the idea of revenge is no, you know, God says revenge is his. Right. So it's like, what, you know, being a Christian, you're not really supposed to take re- revenge. So it's it's part of, you know, being patient and, you know, you don't have to take revenge. You know, God sees you where you are. God, you know, God knows what you're going through, and the bad guy's not going to get away with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. No, I love that. I love that. Well, we're going to wrap up our short time together now, Rebecca, with what is one thing you want readers to know about this particular story? Well, this particular story is, is mainly, um, it's kind of cliche to say, but I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> Don't judge a book cover because you know, we we wear these covers, you know, what we want people to think, but you don't know somebody's story. You don't know what they've been through. So it's good to treat everybody with kindness because you may think, oh, well, they look stuck up. You know, well, you don't know who they are, you know. So mm. it's, it's kind of, you know, everybody has a story, but everybody deserves to be treated with kindness, regardless of what they, you know, they look like, what they sound like, you know, so... Oh, I love that. Well, thank you for being on my show to sh- and sharing about your story. Thank you for having me. Now I'm with Karen Rondu in her latest romantic suspense, Last Stop. So welcome back to my show, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. So we're going to dive right in and start talking about your heroine. And I love this question because I think it gives us a chance to kind of give a little backstory <laughs> to our heroines. But mm-hmm. how does she feel about love at the start of your story? Well, she wants to love and she wants to be loved, but she doubts she can ever have that. Um, and the reason for that is that she doesn't want to repeat her mu- mother's mistakes her mother married an abusive man and then savannah and her mother were on the run for most of savannah's childhood so the story begins with her about to marry but experiencing severe second thoughts Mm. yeah um and what about your hero what's holding him back from finding love well he's as commitment averse as savannah um He's been hanging on to an awful secret since he was 16 years old, and that has affected everything in his life, how how he feels about everything. And so he also, he had his bride leave him at the altar, as Savannah did to her um, groom. So he meets Savannah after she flees her wedding, and she's still in her wedding attire. And the sight of that brings back his memories of his own abandonment issues. And he wants nothing to do with her. But naturally, since this is a romantic suspense, they are really drawn to each other. And that, that's the, the conflict between them is that neither one of them believes that now is the right time for them to get into a relationship. Oh, I love that. We, we do kind of torture our... Uh... <laughs> yes, characters a little bit. Um, but like you mentioned, this is romantic suspense, so we have to get that suspense part in there. Um, so let's talk about your villain. Feel free to use the um, 
plural pronoun if you need to cloak their identity, but what's one redeeming quality about your bad guy or gal in this story? There is more than one villain. And the thing that seems to be going on at the beginning of the story is just the very, very tip of a huge iceberg. And some of the people involved in the story do have some re- redeeming qualities as the story resolves. But I think the true vision really is greed and an unquenchable quest for power. Mm. So, yeah. so while the people may have some redeeming qualities, greed and a quest for power, you know, it's kind of universal. It definitely is something we all have to watch out for, I think, in various degrees in our own hearts. Um, Let's talk about the biggest challenge to writing the book in the setting that you used for Last Stop. Okay. Um, Well, it's the fourth book in the Peach Blossom Romantic Suspense series. And it's a fictional town in Oklahoma called Peach Blossom. And each book in the series features a different couple from that town. So one of the challenges for me has been to introduce at least one of the people in the couple for the next book, in the book that I'm just now releasing. And, you know, time goes on, and I have to remember what their backstory was. So I need to make sure that it's consistent in their book. (laughs) And I also need to expand about who I'm talking about in the community because my list keeps growing with each book. And so I need to do that without bogging down the story. Yes, yeah, that is a challenge for those of us who write either in the same town and or those kind of continuing continuing books, keeping all that straight in our brains. <laughs> it is a challenge. Um, but let's. Um, one of the things I love about... Um, it, you know, writing Christian romantic suspense is that we can infuse our books, even though they're about suspenseful situations, with you know positive messages. Um, so, what is your positive message, or the positive message of Last Stop, that's kind of underneath um, all those layers of the story? Actually, it's the same positive message for all of them. The whole series is about the fact that we all deserve a second chance. And that there, mm. there's healing and redemption through God. I love that, Karen. And that's so true that in it's such an important truth. And you can just tell a million different stories. Obviously, that's what you're doing with this series. Right. <laughs> with that, with that as your theme. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's one that readers will definitely, you know, find um, helpful and and true in our own lives as well. Love those second chances. Yeah. So let's close our time together, um, since we are running out of time, always running out of time, with uh, what is your book's tagline? Experience loves bloom in this gripping tale where commitment of birth Savannah and emotionally scarred Deputy Zach navigate secrets, suspense, redemption, thrills, and a second chance at love. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That's – I really – now, I have to add that to my to-do, to my to-read list now. So thank you so much for sharing about Last Stop on my show today, Karen. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm with Sally Jo Pitts in her new book, Sweet Deceit. So welcome to my show, Sally Jo. Hi, Sarah. Good to be here. Let's dive in with your heroine. What did she want to be when she grew up, and did she become that person? Oh, my heroine is a real impulsive girl, and she needs to use her creativity in the job. So she is job hunting. She has um, applied for a job at the governor's office as the event planner when the story opens. But she's working uh, as a house sitter and waitress. Uh, while job hunting. So the story opens, and she gets run off the road. Somebody's trying to kill her, and that's the opening part for poor heroine. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is a, that's a rough beginning, but 
We we got to do what we got to do for the story. So there we go. Yeah. (laughs) So let let's talk about your hero. Where did he grow up? Now he grew up in the county next to Sweet County. This takes it sweet to see takes place in Sweet County in uh, North Florida, a uh, fictional county, but he grew up in the county next to it on a farm. And uh, he vowed not to, he did not want to return to that area for various reasons, but now he's reluctantly been appointed sheriff in Sweet County. So he's back ah. there. Um, and so let's talk about your villain. What made you decide to make him or her your villain? Yeah, that that was an interesting question because really it's uh there's multiple bad actors. Um but there is ultimately one that's kind of uh the the ultimate uh villain in the story and uh, the reason I picked it was it just kind of came up and tapped me on the shoulder. I d- it was a surprise to me too. If you've ever <laughs> I love that been writing and uh yeah. you know uh, yes, I do. Something else just kind of raises its head. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So this person um, was a surprise villain, even to me. All right, so let's talk about the story setting, which wasn't a surprise. You, so why did you pick this setting? Um, the setting is, well, I live in North Florida, so I'm very familiar with the area. And so I, I picked an area um, that um, uh, would be a small town and uh, that this um, sweet county sheriff would be in. And it's a small, traditional kind of community where they don't like outsiders. Mm. Yeah, and um, yeah, that can make a lot of interesting fodder for our story. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, let's talk about the genesis of the story idea. Where did that come from? Well, I, the story is really my husband's story, and he um, passed away in 2019. But I did. He had told me for years about this happened to him. He was a state investigator. Mm. He was appointed sheriff in this little county where he knew no one, and they did not want him to be there. They were miffed because the governor had removed the sheriff. And uh, so he's having to deal with these people, and they had been allowing uh, illegal um, stuff to go on in the county is why the sheriff was removed. So he goes in with the task of trying to clean things up in a county that does not want him. And um, so that was the genesis of this story. So I created, so he was really in a small county in Florida, but I created a new county, changed the names and so forth. Um, But many of the events in the story are things that happened to him. So... uh, uh, wow. it, it was a fun one to put together. And I was able to confer with him. I, I've been working on this story for like 10 years off and on. Mm-hmm. And I was able to confer with him on this um, before he did pass away. And uh, so a, a lot of it's in there uh, uh, with his uh, input, and the, the book is dedicated to him. Of course, how could you do anything else, Sally Jo? I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> I had to do that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That is such a, what a way to honor um, honor your husband and his work. And I'm sure he was just yeah. tickled pink to just work with you on this story, too. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was a fun thing to, to uh, collaborate on because, uh, to me, so many of the stories just tickled me a lot, the things yeah. that happened to him, so... Well, thank you for sharing about that. Yeah. And we're out of out of our time today, but before okay. we end our short time together, tell us what your book's tagline is. The tagline is someone will stop at nothing to keep the secrets of Sweet County hidden. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you again, Sally Jo, for sharing about your newest romantic suspense, Sweet Deceit. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hammerker.
If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review. You can sign up to receive notifications of upcoming podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammakerfiction.com.